Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you please state your name and spell your last name? Yep, my name is Samuel Truex, T-R-U-E-X. The acoustics are not great in this room, so if you can keep your voice up so that the back jurors can hear you. Okay. Can you tell us how you are currently employed? I am currently retired from the Vermont State Police. Okay, and when did you retire? On uh, November 30th of this year. Okay. And how long had you been employed at the Vermont State Police? Uh, over 26 and a half years. All right, so you were employed with them in October of 2021? Yes, I was. And at some point, did you become involved in the investigation related to Emily Ferlazzo? Yes, on Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. Okay. And how did you become involved? Uh, Detective Lieutenant John Paul Schmidt asked me to respond to the St. Albans barracks and said that there was a missing person complaint uh, that was suspicious in nature. Okay. And upon arrival at the barracks, were you given a specific task? I was given a couple tasks. Uh, one was to sit in on the interview with Joseph Ralazzo. Okay. And during <coughs> that did you have an opportunity to speak with Mr. Ferlazzo yourself? Yes, I did. And the jury has seen the video. Um, so are you the individual that sort of comes in during the breaks and sits with Mr. Ferlazzo? Yes, I am. Okay. And the first time that you went into the interview room, was he, was Mr. Ferlazzo eating? Yes, he was. And did you ask him if he needed anything? Um, I believe Amy got him lunch, and then Seth was in the process of getting him some hot coffee at his request. Okay. And at any point, did you ask him if he needed anything else? Um, he asked me, or he told me he had to go to the bathroom at one point, uh, so I escorted him down the hall to the bathroom and back. Okay. And at one point during the interview, did Mr. Ferlazzo ask you to stay in the room with him? Yes, he asked me if I'd sit down and stay in there with him. Okay. Were you planning on doing that anyway? Uh, I wasn't, but I agreed to do that. Okay. And did you have a conversation with him during that time? Yes. And who initiated that conversation? Um, I think he initiated it. Okay. Did he ask you questions about taking him somewhere? Um, he made a comment. Uh, he asked me if we're going to take him someplace so he can't do that again. Okay. And how did you respond? Um, I don't recall exactly what my response was. Okay. Um, what are some of the other things that you talked about with Mr. Falazzo? Um, he just asked me generally about uh, myself. Um, the police, we talked about, uh, I asked him questions about being a tattoo artist, what was his favorite part. He asked me what my favorite part of being a police officer was. Um, he asked kind of about like the team of detectives and how things worked, um, where everybody was assigned. We talked about his dog, Remington. Um, I told him that Remington was at his friend Jason's house and that um, the dog was okay being there, but he probably would have to make arrangements for long term. Okay. At any point, did you have, have you ever sat in on interviews like this before in your career? Yes. Have you interviewed people who have been charged with murder before? I have. And at any point during your interactions with Mr. Ferlazzo, did you have any concerns about his ability to be engaging in a conversation with the police? No, our conversation went both ways. Um, he was actually very cordial and nice to me, and um, he asked questions. I asked questions of him. It was just a give and take. Okay. And at some point, were you able to find him a cigarette at his request? Yeah, he asked for a cigarette. I asked one of the detectives uh, who brought one in, and then we brought him outside for a cigarette break, I think on two different occasions. Okay. And he made some comments about possible self-harm. Do you recall that? Yeah, at one point he said he wished someone would take him out. And I had said to him that if you have any thoughts of hurting yourself, you need to let me know. Um, he says, well, I'd, if I had a gun, I would do it. Uh, but I don't have a weapon, so I can't. All I have is this hot coffee. 
And again, did him making those comments give you any concerns about his ability to continue to engage in a conversation? Uh, no, I was just concerned for my safety being in the room with him and just it, it, for his own safety as well. Okay. And when you would leave the room and come back in, did he recall who you were? Uh, yes. Did he recall you by name? Yes. Um, when I left after, well, he was still eating, uh, he just said, thank you, Sam, okay. when I stepped out of the room. And when you'd come back in the room, did he recall your name? Yes. Okay. Did you ever feel like he wasn't responding to your questions appropriately? <clears throat> no. At any, any time that he asked for anything, did you get him what he asked for? Or did any time he asked for food or drinks? Yeah, if he needed bathroom. food, if he wanted another hot coffee, to use the bathroom, another cigarette. Um, we were very accommodating. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Jones. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, um, you like you've described a uh, kind of a almost like a switch flipping back and forth between engaging in small talk with Mr. Ferlazzo and him expressing concerns about or him him becoming upset is that fair to say uh yeah and and both of those occurred during your interactions with him right yes. You do recall him saying at least once uh, that his brains were scrambled, don't you? Yes. And that he could, did not have, was not thinking clearly. You recall that as well. Yeah, he said he, he said that he needed to talk to an expert um, that could help him because of his scrambled, an expert in scrambled brains. Scrambled brains. Yes. And you responded by saying, yes, we have people you can talk to. Yes. Uh, and uh, he never did talk to any kind of um, mental health person after he was processed, did he? Uh, I don't know if he did. But that's what you told him would be the... Uh, it, available to him, correct? Yes, and I said that we, as in like the state of Vermont corrections, have that access for that. Yes. Uh, you observed that he, um, at one point, started hyperventilating. Correct. Breathing like this. <sighs> I know what that is. I was just trying to recall. I, have, I haven't seen the video. And you didn't, I'm sorry? I didn't review the video before coming here. Okay. Don't have you, and you don't have a recollection of being in the room when that happened? Uh, I feel like I remember him crying or starting to cry a couple times. Sobbing. 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 Yes. And you said to him, are you okay, right? I did ask him if he was okay, and he told me he was not okay. He was not, that's what he said, I'm not okay. Yes. Um, and I told him that he's going to have to take it one day at a time, that it's going to take time. So you were, correct me if I'm wrong, trying to calm him down. Is that a fair assessment of the kinds of things you were saying to him? I was just trying to reassure him. Reassure him about what? Just the traumatic incident that he's involved in, just the kind of things are going to be okay, trying to just keep a steady... Uh, he said, also said to you that what more than once, what happens next? What, because he seemed to be unfamiliar with the process. Do you remember that? Um, I don't recall exactly. Okay, uh, and you were aware that um, the interview was being live streamed to another room, correct? Yes. So he was under observation by other law enforcement the entire time, correct? Yes, he was. So even if you didn't observe his complete, I'm going to call it meltdown, he was being observed, correct? Yes. And that was all recorded in that room as well. In that room? Yes. One moment, please, Judge.
Thank you. I don't have any other questions for you. Okay. Any redirect? No, Judge. Thank you. You're all set. All right. Um, next witness, there may be a number of exhibits, so we have to gather them and um, discuss them a little bit. But we'll be back with you probably 10 minutes. Yep. We'll need to, to go through them. So we'll excuse you to the jury room again and come back as soon as we can. All right.